Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Electricity and Energy Minister Khotsien Soramakhopa has signalled his intention to review South Africa's electricity pricing policy. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what this could mean. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. In announcing this review, the Minister said South Africa was facing an affordability crisis. Yes, you know, as load shedding becomes less intense uh, and almost a distant memory in some cases, the focus is more and more attention, uh, attention is being given to this issue of our steeply rising tariffs. And you know, this has always been a bugbear for South Africans, but you know, with load shedding, it was even more problematic not having electricity. But I think the attention is definitely turning to the tariffs and the trajectory of the rise and the affordability. And the way this is manifesting in poorer areas, we're seeing this uh, lack of payment for uh, electricity, as well as a number of illegal connections, which is financially very bad for the utilities providing uh, the electricity, but it's also very dangerous, you know, people get electrocuted. So that's how it's manifesting. And then on a daily basis, it's also manifesting in the form of this load reduction, which is equivalent if you are on the recipient end to load shedding, but it's basically implemented to uh, protect infrastructure from being overloaded and, and ex basically substations blowing up. So it's manifesting there and in the sort of at the middle class end, it's really people having to pay far more uh, for electricity every month. And uh, it's also we're seeing protests around this new policy at City Power to implement a 200 rand uh, surcharge for network and services charges which is being applied to their postpaid customers as well, but it hasn't been applied to prepaid customers before, so there's protests around that. And there's also there's just this feeling that electricity is just unaffordable from a middle class perspective, from a, from a poor, uh, poor household perspective, and even businesses you know, are starting to look at how much they are now paying. They've saved as far, much as they can, they've re reduced and put in energy efficiency measures where they can, and yet their bills are rising. So there's definite now attention being paid to the affordability issue. How are tariffs currently set? Well, we have a methodology that's been in place for many, many years, decades, called the multi-year price determination methodology. And it's really a, uh, an allowable revenue model. So ESKIM sets out its allowable revenue and then goes to the, the regulator and makes an application, and then that converts to a tariff uh, when you look at demand and you do a, a calculation. So there's a number of components that form part of the formula. And we know that under that we've had these multi-year, now decades, of above inflation uh, tariff increases. And we're about to see now Eskim has put together the latest application and it's going to be you know, close to 40% uh, in terms of what they're going to be requesting. And the reason they're doing that is they're saying we're still not at cost-reflective levels. And uh, then that gets passed down to the, the municipalities, which has a have a different financial year. So the, the tariff comes in at April 1 for Eskim customers, including the municipalities. And then the municipalities put in their tariff increases from July 1 every year, uh, every year because that's their financial year start. And then they have to claw back those months that they haven't they haven't been recovering the, the high electricity uh, tariff from ESCO. So it's often higher or, or, you know, or at least equivalent to what ESCO is charging. So that's how it is set currently. And as I say, we've had these now multi-decade uh, of inflation increases and prices at the municipal level, because there's so many municipal distributors were already uh, you know, higher by world standards, the electricity tariff from an Eskom perspective was actually very low and they had sub-inflation increases for many, many years and then they had this massive clawback that came uh, in the early, to, uh, mid to, uh, as we entered the, the new millennium sort of from 2007 onwards, we've had these very steeply rising tariffs because they didn't have uh, you know, proper increases before that. But the, the actual uh, municipal tariffs have been half a long time now and by world terms are also looking higher now. So there's, there is a definite and affordability issue. There has already been at least one attempt to overhaul the way the tariffs are set. Yes, it was recent actually. The, the regular energy regulator, NERSA, 
went through a process of public consultation around new rules, new principles to guide this because they wanted to also adjust for uh, what they're saying an unbundled tariff because we are seeing a market structure change, uh, fundamentally having generation being more competitive with a number of players, not just Eskim, having the wires business in the form of the uh, national transmission company, which has now been established, and uh, it's the, the, the market operation, system operation that it performs as well. And then the distribution layer, which were not just Eskim, but lots of distributors, that, as I mentioned earlier. So to have, an, uh, have that unbundling integrated. But that uh, whole process uh, didn't lead to a satisfactory outcome at all. Um, you know, we have a user pay principle, and I don't think we're going to go away from that anytime soon. So we have to keep everyone whole. But you also have to have something that's implementable in the process. And you need a formula for calculating these tariffs as the MYPD tried and tested sort of an allowable revenue formula that's been in place now with people then you know, contesting actually what should be allowed in that allowable revenue formula and what Eskim puts together. But at least there's a formula. This one didn't come with one of those. So there was no way of implementing it. So they've had to withdraw uh, from uh, moving to a new system. And we basically are stuck now with the multi-year price determination model. At least it's a model that people can work with. So I don't think there's going to be any resolution anytime soon. The, the new tariff application, which has been consulted with the National Treasury and with SOLGA, and which is now before NERSA, is going to be based on the MYPD. And it's going to have those aspects and we will have our normal, typical um, public hearing. So the review we're talking about is going to be longer term. You know, what, are the, what should the electricity pricing policy be? How should poor people be uh, uh, protected? And how should the system uh, the, the, the three, this unbundled system with many more players be kept whole in the process and sustainable. That's really where we're going with this review, which is not for the immediate term. The immediate term is still going to be the MIPD process, and we're going to be having hearings before the end of this year into the next set of uh, hikes. Is a sustainable outcome that protects poor consumers possible? It's, it's a very difficult, tough journey. The fact that the electricity minister recognises it, I think is important, is we've got a problem. Uh, no one's happy within the system. The, the electricity supply industry doesn't feel like they yet in a financially secure position. Things are changing all around them, so they, they're on the back foot. Consumers are definitely on the back foot. All of us are on the back foot with these steeply rising uh, prices. The, the subsidy support that is in the system through the free basic electricity allowance of 50 kilowatt hours a month is not working. Uh, of the 10 million eligible households, only 2 million are receiving that subsidy. And most people are, you know, are making a plan and where they can, you know, there's a lot of electricity theft around that. So that's how they're getting around, how lots of poor households are having to get around it because they're not getting that basic electricity uh, allowance. Municipalities are still recouping that <laughs> amount from from uh, the National Treasury in the, and it's, it's unclear where that subsidy goes because it's not going to those households. So the, the system is broken in terms of that very poor household level. The system in the middle is also broken because none of us are able to bear these steeply high rising prices. And the system at the top is also broken because the electricity supply industry says, well, we're not whole. We're not financially sustainable as we are. So it's important that we do this review, but it's, there's no easy a step, stepping stone to a to a sustainable system, and it's and it has to be implementable. You know, the this last uh, NERSA attempt, you know, it was also a, a brave attempt to try and get things done, but it was all wrong headed. You know, you can't have a system that can't be implemented, and if we are going to be based on a user pay principle, which I think we're going to have to be because it's just too big. You can't have multi hundreds of billions subsidised through the fiscus. You know, you're going to have to have a user pay basis. So how do you eventually, I think it's going to have to be about protecting the poorest households and how that subsidy should be distributed. The current 50 kilowatt hour free basic electricity, one, it's not getting to the people that are deserving of it. And two, it's just too little to make any difference in, uh, in actually poverty reduction. 
So there, that at least that is going to have to change. But on finding a tariff setting methodology that is one fair uh, fit for purpose in an un unbundled uh, electricity <laughs> system uh, and that keeps everyone financially sustainable and then is you know, not, not rejected by the consumer is, go is, is a long road and a, uh, it's going to be an arduous one and I can't see any simple fixes. But once we do settle on one, it has to be implementable. It can't be a pie in the sky, you know, Walter Mitty dream. It has to be something that you can actually use a formula and come up with a tariff that is implementable from April 1 in the case of Eskom and July 1 in the case of the municipal, municipal distributors and eventually whatever the distribution system is going to look like down the line, whether they're going to be you know, restructuring there. But, uh, but at the moment, we're very far from a solution. But the minister has put his finger on something that's very hot in society and uh, at least is making a brave attempt to start the journey towards fixing it, if we can. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.